2020 has brought me many things, one of which is the rare and unique opportunity to show you how to clean a non-self-cleaning oven. Now, why might you ask this happened this year? Well, I'll tell you, my self-cleaning oven died. So it's going to oven heaven, which means I don't have to worry about potentially voiding the warranty and ruining it by manually cleaning it. You see, if you have a self-cleaning oven, you're not supposed to ever clean it by hand. You're only ever supposed to use the self-cleaning function or else you can void the warranty. But if you're someone who does not have a self-cleaning oven, you've probably been waiting like 11 years for me to put out this very video. Now that I don't care what happens to my oven, I'm just gonna go for it. So my sleeves are rolled up. Let's go and clean an oven. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you kind of wish that every time you opened your oven, you were presented with a nice, hot, ooey gooey pizza. I don't know, that was really cheesy. <laughs> we should redo that. Cleaning your oven really is a choose your own adventure type cleaning task because you can dial it up or dial it down as much as you want. In other words, depending on how much effort you want to put in, you can really go full force or you can kind of squeak by. So today I'm just going to be showing you how to clean the cavity of the oven itself. I've got a couple of other reference videos I'll link for you down below on this topic, but a few things I want to point out. First and foremost, cleaning the oven really should happen on a fairly regular basis. I can't tell you, I can't like prescribe an exact amount of time. You'll know based on how frequently you cook and how frequently things bubble over. But essentially when you start to see spills and you know, crusty buildup at the bottom of the oven, it'll eventually cook and cook and cook until it becomes carbonized or like blackened. And then what will happen is you'll start to get smoke when you're cooking. It'll affect the flavors of your food. You'll kind of think your kitchen's on fire. So that's why it's really important to kind of stay on top of this and make sure that you're cleaning your oven when you start to see and smell those cues. Now, when you're actually in the oven, aside from removing the racks, you want to be really careful that you're not getting product into fans if you have a convection oven or into any of the burners or coils or heating elements that are inside your oven either. You actually wanna be really careful around that because you don't wanna cause any damage. So when you're cleaning the inside cavity, just work your way around that. Now let's talk about in between those two glass panes in the oven door. They are, they are a pain, okay? And the thing is, you can't really clean them. I mean, you can, you will just void your warranty if you do it because you've got to take the door apart and oven manufacturers don't like when we try to do that stuff ourselves. Now you can kind of jimmy rig something where you put paper towel over a fly swatter and stick it up, fine. If you want to try that, you can. I'm not going to demo that in this video because I don't have time for it, but if you want to try that, you certainly can. Just keep in mind, don't take your oven door apart. You will void the warranty. You'll probably notice here that I have some very simple cleaning products and easy to find household cleaning tools. That's because oven cleaning doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be harsh. You just have to know what you're doing and have a plan of attack. I'm not a firm believer in using heavy duty oven cleaning chemicals. First of all, I'm not totally comfortable using them. And second of all, I don't want those chemicals in my oven that will then cook food that me and my family will eat. So that's why I like to keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna give you a rundown of the things that I have here uh, so that you can grab them and clean along with me. First and foremost, got some paper towel. I've got microfiber cloth and vinegar. This is for after the fact. We're not using this during the cleaning. I've then got dish soap and baking soda. That's right, I bought it from the bulk food store. Um, that we're gonna be using as our main product for cleaning the oven. I've got a scraper. You can use a windshield scraper, old credit card, or one of these. I'll link it for you down below. Then I've got a Scotch-Brite heavy-duty scrub pad. Love these for this task. And I've, oops, and I've also got some steel wool, which I probably won't use, but it's always good to have on hand in case you need to level up a bit. Oh, and I also have some newspaper, which I'll be putting on the floor to catch all the dirt. Today I'm also going to be cleaning the drawer and the area under the drawer, so I will start by removing everything from the drawer. And this is just good general practice because when you're cleaning your oven, you might get some liquid dripping in. 
Next up, I'm removing the oven racks as well. You can clean those in the bathtub. I've got that video for you linked below. Now, lining the area with newspaper is a good idea. It just saves you from having to do additional cleanup afterward. Looking inside the cavity of the oven, if you will, you'll see there's quite a bit of buildup in there and some of it's loose and some of it is hardened on, which is why I'm using this scraper to do some cursory cleaning. I wanna get off as much as I can so that I don't actually have to scrub and clean that mess up. So I'm just using a paper towel to do that, wiping it all out. Now I'm making up a solution, four parts baking soda, one part dish soap, one part water. I'll stir it up and you wanna have a nice thick paste so you can fiddle around with the consistency if you want it a little bit thinner, go for it. I'm just applying it by hand here. I'm sure there's a more eloquent way to do it, but I just felt like going crazy, crazy town. So here I am, I'm putting it on the sides, even on the door, but I have a feeling I'm gonna do the door with barkeeper's friend. Now I'm removing that drawer and just using a handheld vacuum to get under because seriously, who is pulling out their oven? And I found a giant spider web, so it was a good thing I did it. Now I'm using a paper towel to wipe out any of the debris and then I'm giving it a good spray because obviously I can't put this in the sink. I'm using a soap filled sponge just to give it a good scrub down. Then I'm going to use a wet microfiber cloth to rinse the interior of this drawer and I can put it off to the side. Little pro tip here is to put a towel down so that your knees don't get sore. Now in that bowl, I've just got some water. I've waited 30 minutes, by the way, to do this. That product has sat for 30 minutes and I'm just starting to scrub. Now you guys will notice I'm using my left hand only. My right shoulder, for those of you who don't know, I dislocated it a while ago, so I actually can't clean with that arm and it is my dominant arm, so my cleaning chops are a little bit suffering right now, but Bear with me. So I'm doing a mix of the scraper and the heavy duty scrub pad, making sure to get the sides, the back, and of course the bottom as well. I'm gonna give this window a good cleaning, but again, I'm just gonna use Barkeeper's Friend because it needs that extra oomph. It took me between five and 10 minutes to scrub inside that oven. And again, I was using my non-dominant hand, so I didn't get the best results. But that's essentially the technique that you're going to use. And now I'm just using water and microfiber cloths to quote unquote rinse the inside of the oven because baking soda leaves a residue behind. I'm gonna finish it up with a vinegar rinse here. So I'm just taking another microfiber cloth and giving everything a final wipe down with some vinegar. That just helps to cut any residual grease and polish things up in there. Now I'm splashing water onto the interior oven window and I'm sprinkling Barkeeper's Friend on there. It's a super powerful product, but you can only use it on the glass in here. I'm using that heavy duty scrub pad to get all of that build up off. It really does take a little bit of effort, well, actually a lot of elbow grease, but it does come off and this window ended, coming, ended up coming out beautifully clean. So here I'm using a microfiber cloth dipped in water to quote unquote rinse it off. You may wanna do it once or twice. And you can see that glass is clean. I mean, the interior panels are another story, but the glass itself was very clean. If you're so inclined, you can watch the very old but still applicable video we did years ago about how to clean your self-cleaning oven. I'll link that for you down below, as well as the video teaching you how to clean your oven racks in your bathtub. Also got that linked for you down below. But now, Things are complete. You know how to clean your oven, whether it is self-cleaning or non-self-cleaning. I hope that these tips and techniques have helped you and made you feel more confident in approaching this job. And you now know, like, yes, it's gonna take a bit of time, but once you have a method, a strategy, and you know how to approach it, you'll be able to do it efficiently and you'll get great results. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what is the best thing to come out of your oven this year? For me, well, <laughs> My oven kind of died in April, so I haven't been using it that much, but I've got to say prior to that, the best thing that came out of the oven was a shepherd's pie that I made for Easter dinner. It was fabulous. So let me know what you made. That was amazing in the comments down below.
If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. We are all keeping it clean over at Clean My Space and our microfiber products are over at makers.clean. Here is that oven racks cleaning video I was telling you about. You should totally check it out because I break it down and make it super simple. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, which is somewhere down there, and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.